Is our 2000s anime licensed games any good? Let's check it out. You all enjoyed it when I talked about licensed games from the 2000s, so let's talk about some more games based on existing intellectual properties. But this time... He said intellectual properties. Okay, I like how he's pre is real professional always articulating. A twist. We're going to be looking at licensed games that I grew up And still the same as flashing. He wants to, us to remain safe, and that that's a good thing, right guys? Up with based on Japanese manga and anime. There really is no better place to start than with one of the most popular manga series that's been running for over two Gosh. Just seeing the graphics look like this, it's like eye candy, bro, you know what I mean? Video games are awesome. It wouldn't be... It's so, uh, it's so aesthetically pleasing, like, you know what I mean? Two decades. The graphics are amazing. Ichiro Oda, and today... Oh my gosh, it's like, you know, it's like an arcade, it's almost like a casino game, like... Let's start, you know what I mean? Get into the adventure. Video games are awesome. The One Piece game made for the Game Boy Advance. EBA. Just called One Piece, which covers the story of the first part of the manga, the East Blue Saga. This game was developed by Dimps, a Japanese company. For a second, I thought it said Pimps, bro. <laughs> company who have a long history of developing licensed games, most notably many of the Dragon Ball games like the Dragon Ball Z Budokai series and Dragon Ball Z. Budokai Tenkaichi. <laughs> uh, I said like poke a little bit of fun at, uh, at my friend for playing that game because the, the name the name is funny. Verse series. Although they've also worked on Street Fighter games as well as many of the handheld Sonic games like the Sonic Advance series and the Sonic Rush series. Snap. They've had their stumbles and they have their fair share of detractors, but they're- I like the 3D Sonic's best, bro. ...reputable developer in the industry who's made some good- Let me know if you like 2D Sonic or 3D Sonic in the comments below. Like this game, for example. One Piece on the GBA is a 2D beat-em-up game, although this game does stand out as it has a much larger emphasis on platforming than other beat-em-ups. In this game, you play as the main character of One Piece, Monkey D. Luffy, a young man who wants to be a pirate, specifically... <laughs> platforming, aka jump around, and if you fall, you uh, lose your life, right guys? Specifically, the king of the pirates. Luckily, he ate a special fruit called the gum gum fruit, which gives his body the properties of. Not water. always, not always. Never mind. But ironically enough, not the properties of gum. Navy. Luffy's rubber body gives him access to a variety. This, the, the anim this anime still goes on, by the way. Quite popular. Of unique moves like a long range punch, the ability to deflect bullets Whoa. by inflating himself like a balloon, and the power to rocket himself in different directions by using his elastic body like a slingshot. You can also call on the Okay, I'd actually play this. It seems pretty fun. Your pirate crewmates by pressing the A and B button together to do a special move. I really wish they used that like some that looks like some sort of clown, and it is, guys. Look at him, bro. Look at him. Combination for this, as there have been plenty of times when I accidentally activated a special move. Strangely, you don't get your partners when you start a stage, even if they've already joined your crew. You have to find them in the level to use their special move. Like most beat em ups, the combat can get eh, a little repetitive, but this game manages to make it less of an issue by incorporating platforming into the mix. By making the player fight and platform at the same time, it keeps one element from getting too boring. Pretty cool. You can almost pass this off as like a 3ds game i was playing mario and luigi dream team and it kind of looks like a 3d uh game boy Advance game guys like the platforming is pretty cool thanks to the many gimmicks and the levels and the abilities that luffy has and fans of the 2d handheld sonic games don't worry because demps made sure they brought the many 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 bottomless pits to this game oh my gosh bro save states save states is just one word or two words, save states, guys. You just press the hotkey and it, you don't, you, you haven't even fallen to your death, bro. You don't have to start back at the freaking checkpoint or whatever. That's one, one of the most awesomest things. Or even the rewind fu function. I think the bottomless pits make this game way more difficult and annoying than it had any reason being. But hey, if you like a challenge, then this may give you a bit of trouble. All in all, though, it's a decent beat em up that I'm sure fans of the genre and fans of One Piece can enjoy. Dims has made several great Dragon Ball Dang, Dang. So he really likes the game. No, no, no uh, jokes or anything like Scott the Wise, and that's fine. 
licensed games and in general there are a lot of dbz what dbz games out there Ultimate everybody's trying to be link now Ultimate battle 22 is not one of them now you might be wondering wait a playstation 1 game in the 2000s it's definitely not unheard of but by the early 2000s the playstation man tony hawk is still still retired off his uh off those video his video game lineup man two was already in full force well technically no this game did not come out in the 2000s it originally came out in 1995 however north america this looks like dog bro did not get this game until 2003 eight years after its initial japanese release hey bro we're always left in the dust bro we're always left in the dust japan gets all the goodies before us Dragon Ball Z has a very interesting history in America. Dragon Ball is a manga created by Akira Toriyama and it ran from 1984 to 1995. The first part of the manga is about a strange boy with a monkey tail named Son Goku who travels around the world looking for the mystical seven Dragon Balls which can grant a single wish if all seven are collected. The second part of the manga is about Goku as a grown man now with a wife and son. The second part of the manga was adapted into an anime called Dragon Ball Z which What about Dragon Ball? Uh, I think that still runs, right guys? ran from 1989 to 1996. Deep I, I would be into manga but it just would consume so much of my time. Um, I used to until I got bullied. I used to watch Naruto. I was going to watch every single episode and then I got bullied from watching it. And I just stopped watching that day and haven't touched another episode. It's kind of depressing, bro. DBZ didn't make its way over to America until September 1996, after the show had already finished airing in Japan in January earlier that year. As a result, many of the DBZ games that were released while the series was running in Japan never made their way stateside. However, for some reason, they decided to release Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22, a very outdated PS1 game from 1995 in North America in 2003. So yeah, this game is pretty bad. That is one and all anomaly. They got Android 18, guys. We don't even have Android 18 out for our phones. Even as a kid, I remember not enjoying this game at all. Before we get into the negatives, though, eh, why don't we talk about the positives? It looks like Mortal Kombat, bro. Like, they took fair to release this, guys. The roster? It's pretty good. As the name of the game would imply, there are 22 characters to fight with here, and you've got many of the staples, like Vegeta, Gohan, Trunks, Piccolo, and Frieza. There are even a handful of secret characters. A cool gag that this game does that I actually think is pretty funny is that when you get more characters, it changes the title of the game. Instead of Ultimate Battle 22, it's now Ultimate Battle 27. So yeah, the roster is actually pretty good. I guess that's pretty cool. But besides that, though, just about everything else kind of sucks. Ultimate Battle 22 is a it looks like it fighting game and in a it's not even 3D guys. But responsive controls, good animation. It's hardly 3D. And wait to the character. It's like 1% 3D moves, which this game has none of. The game feels very slow and very floaty. And every time you throw a punch, you have to hear this. <laughs> hey, at least the sound effects get it right. I like the sound effects. You also can't even select the stage you want to go to. The game just picks it for you. Well, it's not <laughs> like I'd actually want to go to any of these stages because all of these stage graphics look horrendous. The game tries to mix 2D sprites with 3D backgrounds. Okay. So just the, that that that's the only example of 3D in the game and that's fine. And it just does not look good. The 3D is very bare bones and the 2D sprites are muddied and- Bare bones is a, a perfect vocabulary word for the 3D in this game. Unclear. I guess I can give the developers some slack for the poor graphics as this is a very early PlayStation 1 game. It came out less than a year after the PS1 first release. I would talk more about the game's developers, but there's no company actually credited for developing this game, just a bunch of individual people. So yeah. When it comes to anime in the 2000s, it's impossible not to bring up Yu-Gi-Oh, which is based on the manga written by the late Kazuki Takahashi. Yugi this is just something I kind of grew out of slash, you know, didn't have the money for. Yu-Gi-Oh is about a high schooler named Yugi who has his body inhabited by. But the games, the games are fire because you get the cards in the game. You know what I mean? 
spirit of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh. Yugi plays a variety of games in the beginning of the manga, but but basically the game that took over the series was Duel Monsters, a trading card game where you battle with opponents using a plethora of monsters. Duel Monsters eventually became an incredibly popular real world trading card game called Yukio. Uh, I still watch, I, I, I watched a little bit, but I don't watch them no more. That still has a very big competitive scene to this day. Obviously, this led to a ton of video games being made, one of those games being Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses for the PlayStation 2, released in 2001 in Japan and in 2003 in the West. As a kid, I remember really looking forward to this game. I mean, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh! video game. I can enjoy the trading card game. Yeah, I don't think I had this one. Without having to waste all my money on buying packs of expensive cardboard. But oh boy was I disappointed, because this game is not like the trading card game. Duels of the Roses plays a lot more like a board game. Monsters are summoned on the board and they can move around. The most important monster on the board is your deck leader. Your deck And if it's not going to play like the real game, it's not a W in my opinion, guys. I played a, a PS1 game that was a... Or PS2 game that was like the original game, and it was awesome. Or at least, you know... And aspects of it. It was not the perfect example, but it was pretty cool. Is like the this, in chess. It's this I did see another video on this, and it's it's a sad example of a, a trading card game. Like a. <laughs> so you want to protect at all costs. You can use your monsters to attack your opponent's monsters. Destroying monsters in attack position causes your opponent to lose life points. Whoever loses all of their life points first loses. Another way to lose is to have your deck leader surrounded by enemy pieces. As a result, positioning is really important in this game. Another reason But it is cool to see the 3D sprites of some of these cards, you know what I mean? I mean, it st still has pretty good aspects of the trading card game, but I much prefer it to be the trading card game. Positioning is so important is because of the terrain. Each space on the field can be a special type of terrain that will affect the monsters on them, like the sea terrain boosting the power of sea serpent monsters and the forest terrain boosting the power of insect monsters. Then there's also the various spell cards and trap cards that can drastically change the tide of battle. Plus, some monsters have their As they do in this current state of events. ...their own special effects too. Heck, you can even fuse monsters together to get new monsters with different effects and stats. The gameplay is pretty interesting. The only issue I have is the difficulty. This game can be pretty hard, especially when you're first starting out. The issue is that a lot of the initial cards that you get suck. And the only way to get new cards is, you guessed it, grinding. It's better than uh, purchasing DLC, you know what I mean? What's even worse is that you have to defeat your opponent to actually get a new card from facing them. And what's even worse is that you have to play a slot machine minigame to get the new card. What the heck? No, man. Nah. Only quick, efficient, and reliable way to get new cards is to cheat. You can enter in special passwords to get new cards to Thank goodness they added this. Add to your deck. You could pretty easily find these things online, and while you can only get one copy of each card with a password, there's no limit to how many cards you can get in general with this method. There is a deck cost system in place to prevent you from going too crazy with broken cards, but it's pretty lenient, meaning you can potentially stock your deck with a ton of powerful cards from the anime, like the mighty blue eyes white dragon. Whoa! <laughs> of the anime, I guess I should talk about the story for this game, and surprisingly, just like the gameplay, the story Here. of this game is nothing like the manga or the anime. While there are characters Looks like they wanted to, you know, uh, explore new avenues or something, I don't know guys. Maybe it's a different team working on the video game. Look like Yugi and Seto, heck they even call them by those names, they actually aren't them. You see, the story of this game is actually a Yu-Gi-Oh!ified retelling of the civil wars that took place in England in the latter half of the 1400s called the Wars of the Roses. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so what, what were they thinking? Trading card games in the 1400s? Not that unrealistic, but that's just interesting to think. A pretty big change from a story about a bunch of Japanese teenagers playing card games. But honestly, this isn't too far-fetched for Yu-Gi-Oh, considering ancient history is a big part of the series. I think my favorite part of the We're story- We're getting a mini history lesson, that's it. ...story is how there's actually two different routes you can take depending on which side of the war you join at the beginning of the game. 
the House of Lancaster, or the House of York. What are we, Harry Potter now? Pretty surprised, as I thought the game would just force you to join Yugi's side since he's the hero of the show. I decided to join Seto's side since one of Yugi's followers summoned me here against my will to help fight in a war, whereas Seto, he told me he'd help me get home. Seto Kaiba is overall pretty chill and he has some awesome theme music. Oh man, video game soundtracks are just awesome in general. In general, this game has a pretty great soundtrack. I think my personal favorite parts of the game are the 3D battle animations. It's so cool getting to see all of these cards fully animated, especially niche cards that would never get a chance to show off in the anime, like Crazy Fish, Stone Ghost, and Gruesome Goo. It's a shame that this game is bogged down by some of its issues like the grinding and the fact that the game can be broken pretty easily with just a few cards with the password system because I think this is one of the- That's fine, you know, that means you don't have to grind that much. Most interesting licensed games that I've ever played. As a kid, I didn't like this game at all for how different the gameplay was, how the characters were not the ones I'm used to, and the difficulty of the game. But I've come around to appreciate it for being a really unique game in general, licensed or not. Eventually, I'm going to run out of licensed games to talk about, so let me know if you all have any fun, horrible, or weird licensed games that you want me to check out for next time. Alright guys, let's look at a few comments. Dragon Ball Advance Adventure is awesome. Okay, there's a suggestion. They got full out Metal Alchemist, oh snap, for PS2. Do the old Harry Potter games? Alright, alright, we're getting this dude some ideas. Check out Kiro Talks in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, hold on, let me see his, like, subscriber milestones. So he's been you doing YouTube for over a year, guys. But he's got, he's almost at 100k, guys. Not bad, not bad. I mean, he's going from 50k to 100k is his milestone. I mean, why not 60k, 70k? That's all right, that's all right. Check him out in the description. Got a Twitter as well. Later, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and do all my reactions live on Twitch.